of Rhodes because he's on here. I wanted to show you on TFNN.com. You come here, you go to newsletters. We will run all the way down to mastering probability. And again, you know, I, I see a lot of these newsletters. I just want to see what everyone is thinking about. This is fantastic. You get access um, to any of his webinars. You go here and you hit that subscribe button. And it is $149 for one month. If you're a first-time subscriber, for whatever reason, you don't like it. Again, I don't see um, why you wouldn't like it. It's fantastic. But it is a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go give it a shot. Steve, are you Thanks, with Steve. us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Fantastic. you know, what I wanted to talk about today was really just looking at the markets and what's on fire. And what's been on fire for, for a little while here has been uh, uh, gold. Uh, uh, not gold, uh, Lightspeed Crew, Black Texas T, WTI. So what I have up on our screen right now, Jacob, is a five-year seasonal chart. So I use a tool that's produced by the folks over at SeasonX, which is really great because it's for so many instruments where you can see – over whatever period of time that you select, what the average seasonal cycle is. So, and we're going to go through a few of these for, for WTI. So this is the five-year cycle. And right now, that red vertical line shows you where we're at today. Now, what this chart shows us over the last five years is that a low takes place in the April time frame. So you go over here to the left, you can see between April and May. You typically see a low, and then you see a high that comes in towards the middle of October. So about another couple of weeks from now. So that's what the five-year chart pattern analog looks like. When we compare that to what's actually taken place in 2023, you'll see I've got a little green arrow here. That's the low that we saw on May 4th, 2023. So typically the seasonal pattern, I'll go back to it, you get a low in April. Well, I'm going to say that May 4th, and we use this more as a guideline versus an exact to the date time frame, uh, Jacob. So I would say that at this stage here, the five-year is uh, the five-year uh, seasonal cycle seems to be in sync with what we've seen so far, which is a low in May, and perhaps we're going to see a high in October. Now, that was five years. If we take a look at a 10-year time frame, the 10-year time frame also suggests a low not in April, but in March, with a high coming in in the October time frame. Now, when we take a look at this 10-year seasonal cycle out here, you can see that September is typically flat. We're not flat here in September, but October, November are just horrible over a 10-year period of time. Now, let's expand that out. We go to a 15-year period of time. Well, the 15-year period of time suggests a low in March and a high in October. So, so far, we've gotten 5, 10, and 15. They all suggest that WTI should move higher into at least October. Well, let's go beyond 15 years. Let's add 10 more. We get into a 25-year seasonal cycle. Now, the 25-year seasonal cycle says there should be a top today. Is there a top today? Do I see a top today? I don't see it in my chart patterns, but, you know, we'll pull some of those up for us to take a look at. So I don't think that it's a – now, it could be, but I don't think it's a 25-year seasonal cycle that's really driving the market for WTI. Sure. And then the last thing, I've got data that goes back 32 years. And on that 32-year uh, seasonal cycle chart says we make a short term top today lasts for about a week and then we move higher into the October time frame. So what all of these seasonal charts are really communicating to you and I, Jacob, is to be careful as we get into that October time frame. Any questions so far about what I've shared? No, no, I think that's I think that's great. And uh, I'm not seeing any questions in the den either. Um, you know, it's interesting because we've been speaking about it a lot and uh, it seems like the Fed might not raise rates this month, but Going forward, if we're continuing to see, you know, even really a top in October, um, you know, I'm not sure how well that bodes um, for, for the rates going forward, right? So that's sure. kind of the only thing I have the input on that, and we're not getting any questions in the den, but, I mean, pretty fascinating stuff anyway. Yeah, so if I take a look, and now if we go into the chart, so everything here is suggesting that Lightspeed Crude should at least move higher into October. So when I take a look, we're in the November contract for Lightspeed Crude. This is the monthly time frame. And what, folks, what you see on my chart here, first you'll see some dashed lines. Those dashed lines are market profiles. Those market profiles tell you and I where buyers and sellers are located. Now, there's also a center. And the center line, which is 8398, is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair price with inside that profile range, which was from 7362 up to 8743. Now, the month is not over. 
But if we do close above 87.43, that will then be bullish because price will have broken out above where the sellers are located at 87.43. Now, we also have sellers that are located at 94.34, and that's this dark cloud cover candle. So that is a resistance area. So this suggests that what we should see is uh, light speed crude get up into that 94.34 level. That's what the monthly chart tells us. How about the weekly chart? The weekly chart has actually formed an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, those folks that are familiar with this pattern are also going to notice that the B to C retracement, I don't have the line drawn in here, but that B to C retracement is, is less than a 0.382, or it's about 31%, 32%. That typically leads us to more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. But the one-to-one -one on a weekly basis gets us up to 96.70. And we still have resistance at that 94.34 level. So 94.34 is what I'm going to throw out to folks that you really need to keep an eye on because that is prior resistance out there. If I look at the daily chart, Jacob, the daily chart does not have any kind of a topping pattern. It shows us that price is above the top of its profile, 87.27. Prices above its green, this little green squiggly, red squiggly line is referred to as an oscillator on change line. Mm. When price is above a green oscillator and change line, it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. So what we have here on the daily time frame are bullish conditions. On the weekly, they're bullish. On the monthly, they're bullish. And here this suggests that we could see, not that we will, we need to let the bars play out. But we could see a TD9 top that takes place between Wednesday and Friday of this week. So we could be seeing a short-term top. I'm not at all suggesting to people listening here that it's just a straight ride up to the 90-ish area out there. I'm not suggesting that at all. But conditions here are very bullish and very favorable, whether it's daily, weekly, or the monthly time frame. Here, when I take a look at WTI, this chart here takes a look at consecutive. This is the uh, weekly time frame chart. What, this, what these digits are showing us, uh, Jacob, the black digits are consecutive closes higher. So each week you have a higher close than the prior week. Or the red digits are lower closes, the exact opposite of that. It turns out that on a weekly basis, WTI, especially when it gets going, and it is going right now, tends to move higher for six to seven consecutive weeks. And I've got the blue arrows drawn here, and we're only in week number four. So again, this bodes well for a likely move higher into that middle of October type time frame. So we're already in week number three, or this is going to be week number four. So we're saying maybe two to three weeks out from now. Well, it turns out that gets us into that October time frame out here. So um, the other thing that I'll throw out there, I didn't, you, you had mentioned rates, but I didn't take a look at uh, WTI as a result of rates. But in, in essence, we, we, I've done that by taking a look at the U.S. dollar index. And if we take a look at this, this is a correlation chart. This is a directional correlation chart. And the bottom panel here, when the bars are below zero, tells us we have an inverse relationship. When they're above zero, we have a direct correlation. The dollar moves higher, WTI moves higher out there. And basically, it's been a coin toss over the last, uh, for a 10-day average over the last uh, couple of months out there. There's no coin toss when it comes to the energy sector and uh, the XLE and WTI. You can see they are directly correlated with each other. So basically... It uh, looks like Lightspeed Crude is going to continue to move higher out there, and I just simply wanted to share that with you and everybody else that was listening. Yeah, that was awesome, Steve. I mean, that was extremely informative. I, I, I really enjoyed that, and I think everyone Perfect. else did, too. Perfect. Well, Steve. Hey, Jason. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks for the interview, and uh, Absolutely. enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, we're glad to have you back, Steve. We will uh, talk to you soon. Take care now. Okay. Bye-bye. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back.